Hello and welcome to Business Spotlight. I'm Christine Mundwa. June is Youth Month in South Africa. In Johannesburg, activities are aligned with the city's Joburg 2040 strategy to reduce poverty, promote economic development and growth, and to ensure sustainability through meaningful mobilization of all who work and live in the city. Come with the Business Spotlight team as we go on the ground to see what the city is doing. But first, let's look at the history and see why South Africa commemorates June 16 as Youth Day. It was on June 16, 1976, that more than 15,000 students gathered at Orlando West Secondary School with the intention of participating in a peaceful march to the nearby Orlando Stadium. The demonstration had been planned in protest against the use of Afrikaans as the medium of instruction at schools. However, the police and armed forces responded to the protest violently and one of the first fatalities of the day was Hector Peterson, a 13-year-old pupil who was shot by the police. 175 others were also killed that day. The violent backlash to what was meant to be a peaceful march caught the attention of the international community. After this event, many countries imposed sanctions on South Africa in an attempt to force the apartheid government to ease its repressive rule. Now, 39 years later, the youth of the country are facing another dilemma. The youthful population is growing rapidly and simultaneously they face the spectre of unemployment. It's always very interesting to have a youth month commemoration or celebration. Uh, because this time around, everybody in the country is trying to grapple with the question around youth empowerment and how we are responding to the plight of young people in the country. When um, Councillor Mpo Pakstow took over, uh, from, from the strategy that was implemented, was set in place by Executive Mayor uh, Masondo, um, he then said we need to consolidate all the strategies that are in the city. At the time, there was an integrated youth development strategy which was a, a product of young people themselves, where young people raised issues about how the city must, re must respond to their plight, how young people must be decision makers, how their voices must be heard in the city. And, and from that angle, the, the, the city has been very instrumental in terms of responding to young people. But more importantly, it is the challenge of many people that are coming to the city. City of Johannesburg, as you know, uh, from the stats, is that we're getting 10,000 people every month. Now, getting 10,000 people, new entrants to your city, but majority of those are young people. 60 to 70 percent are actually young people that migrate to the city of China, and they're coming for all sorts of opportunities. People who's coming, it's all sorts of people, people that are educated, we have a number of uh, uh, migrants that have come to the city uh, with impeccable uh, 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 qualifications. And, but equally also, we have a number of people, no qualifications, with, uh, uh, with, with less to offer in as far as uh, higher knowledge, education, except for what is good, except for the labor that they, brought, they bring. That's very important because a combination of this really makes a successful city. So it is this mix that we as the city uh, are acknowledging and embracing and putting people according uh, to various initiatives that we have. There are four key initiatives geared at encouraging and supporting entrepreneurial ventures through partnerships that will in turn benefit the community and the economy of the city. They are Harambe Youth Accelerator Program, Josie at Work, the Josie SME Hub, and the City of Joburg ICT Software Hub. We have something called uh, 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 EPWP. Now, EPWP, it's national government, but we are taking advantage because it's the city. More people are found here. So we're using EPWP, the funding that's come from national. We also augment our own funding. And from EPWP, where especially young people are then exposed to all sorts of training, all sorts of work opportunities, uh, and they range from across every department in the city of Johannesburg. Whether you go to GMPD, 
whether you go to Johannesburg Market, that all the time, all, always, you'd find people from EPWP, training that's happening, work opportunities, they are there, short time, six months, sometimes a year. I mean, we have now in the, in the Jobek market, uh, people that have stayed there for over two, three years, uh, getting good training, but from there they can then exit uh, to another program. There's another program where majority they ex exit to. It's called Josie at Work. Spencer Malongete's company, Waste Group Projects, has been awarded a contract to manage Josie at Work Waste Capacity Support Agents. Waste Group Projects is, 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 is part of a, 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 a group of companies that belong to the Waste Group. Uh, it's, one of, it's the fourth largest waste company in, in, in the Republic of South Africa. Uh, it's, it's, it's amongst the top four companies. It's not a listed company. Uh, it's, 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 it's a PTY LTD. So Waste Group Projects, uh, it's, it's, it's a division which is public sector uh, uh, focused in the group. Uh, it, it basically does mainly local government business, uh, business with local government where we contract with municipalities to manage their landfill sites, to provide waste collection services like in Mohali City we provide we, 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 we have a contract with them where we're doing door to door waste collection. So when when the city advertised for when the city of Jobek advertised for uh, private companies that are established to to partner with them on the Josie at work project, we then we, we then tendered and were selected. Uh, what it basically uh, means and entails that partnership is that we are delivering a, a training and education program on behalf of the city to the selected enterprises that are going through this incubation program. We, we're mentoring those entities uh, for a 12-month period to, to enable them uh, to, be, to be standalone entities that can basically do business with government and, and, and also uh, uh, probably poses competition against us in the future. The task of cleaning South Africa is huge and requires more companies and, 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 and more people to get involved. So it makes sense for us to, to participate in, 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 in that developmental path. Secondly, to deal with the injustices and the, the imbalances of the past and to bring young black uh, people into the mainstream of the economy. It's our contribution towards uh, uh, black economic development. Musa Telecoms is an IT SMME with an environmental conscious, which linked up with Josie at Work for a waste disposal project. The, the, the IT industry is a bit careless on, on the environment itself. And these are my reasons. Um, you'll find that um, a company that produces um, a, a specific kind of, of, of an equipment um, doesn't have, or doesn't even put what is necessary on how you need to dispose of, of, of the item. Now that on its own creates um, an, a window of, of an opportunity for, 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 for the environment to get affected by the way we dispose um, electronic waste. Therefore, out of, out of the core business of the company, therefore that has become something that we needed to do as, as uh, you know, call it a philanthropy. But that on its own, philanthropy is for those who can afford. Then we are a small company and we decided not. Let's just rather open a division within the waste management that will take care of, of the e-waste um, together with everything that, that falls underneath this, such as recycling and also residual waste. Entrepreneurship, it's a culture that is misunderstood by many, especially us as blacks. Um, and, and, and the government, as, 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 as big as it is, is, is not always flexible of being able to know exactly what to do at a specific time. Like I said, I come from the private sector and, and I bring the knowledge that I've learned there and bring it into you know, the operations of, um, um, of doing uh, services for the city of Joburg. So that integration is very important. Now, without support, it becomes futile that we would have people with the skill seated at home and doing nothing, as opposed to the government being able to allocate some work for them to do. In a process, it creates billionaires. And while the building is being created, sustainable jobs are being created. So this is very, very, very important in the sense that it is not only looking at just you know, what is the problem, now, which is a clean environment, but it also addresses other social ills that we have in, within the community. Josie Edward says, form your own SMME. 
form your own company. Because as the city, there's lots of work that we're taking to community. You're coming from Midlands. In Midlands, I can tell you, there's lots of opportunities that are coming from the city of Johannesburg. There's grass cast cutting, there's all sorts of work that we do in those areas. But what do we do mostly? We give it to private big companies to do that work. Jose at work is the opposite. What we're doing, we're actually taking all this work into smaller companies rather than advertising for big companies to come and do all sorts of it is communities in Midlands in different localities that do their job and so we expose them and give them this job they do all sorts of cities job that would otherwise be done by uh, say big business or other business uh, the, and they form themselves into SMMEs. Majority of those are young people. The empowerment, you know, to, to actually to express um, the latitude that, you know, working with the government can be able to assist the young entrepreneurs. To date, we have a truck that we've used. And, you know, without, us, without, without the city of Joburg, we wouldn't have been able to have that muscle for us to be able to procure a truck. We, we have now a van and we're only two months within the project. Now, tell me, how possible would that be if you were to work in any other project? So it wouldn't yet be as possible. So now that, working with the government, it has actually made, made, um, made it easy so for, 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 the, for the small enterprises to be able to operate efficiently with the support from the CSA, which is uh, the Waste Group Project. In May this year, Mayor Parks Tau announced the launch of the Vulindlela Ed Josi program, an innovative response to youth unemployment in the city. It is a partnership with Harambe Youth Accelerator, a leading youth development social enterprise forged by the private sector to drive the first year of the program. Now, the program aims to break down barriers to opportunities for 200,000 youth by 2016 and will enable the youth to enter work, education and training opportunities. If you listen to the executive, he's saying the Volindle Letros is not a hand out. It's a hand up. So young people themselves, it's a call to young people to participate in the transformation and innovation of our own city in terms of building the city. Because these are next the future leaders that are going to lead the, this country. The mayor himself was a young person. He led in the youth movement, in the student movement, in the youth movement. He didn't just wake up tomorrow and became a mayor. Um, you know, he started uh, as an activist, as a young activist. Uh, a very militant young person at the time. You know, um, I mean, people, it's, sometimes they don't know that they, at some point the executive mayor was arrested uh, during apartheid regime, just fortifying the apartheid regime system. And these are young people who are very instrumental uh, and we draw inspiration from the courage and the bravery of these young people. Welcome back to Business Spotlight. The city of Joburg recognizes people as assets and is dedicated to building skills within institutions and communities. As important is encouraging self-reliance. The business place on Marshall Street in Johannesburg has become well known as an entrepreneurial hub. It is the home of Josy SME Hub, an entrepreneurial development program responsible for establishing entrepreneurial hubs across Johannesburg. The Josy SME Hub was established in response to the pervasive fragmentation in the small business development space, which both public and private sectors regard as a priority in the development of the economy. The business place has recognized the challenge the Josy SME Hub is facing and has identified opportunities to assist the city of Johannesburg to integrate this ecosystem into its broader economic development agenda. To start off, this building that we see now is a donation from Investec Bank uh, from the corporate sector under their corporate social responsibility. So they donated a, this building and we conceptualized a, a thing called a multi-agency one-stop shop for entrepreneurs. Uh, and why we've done that was if you take a typical entrepreneur in a township or in a specific area requiring specific uh, help and, 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 and support uh, to start a business or grow a business, one has to travel to various different institutions and uh, agencies. For example, if you need to start the business, you need to go to CIPC, uh, sort yourself out there, come back, go to a bank once you receive the necessary paperwork, 
if you do get your bank account sorted out, then you may have to get your VAT and your tax registrations done. You have to find an accountant. Uh, then you need to do a business plan. You have to find another agency to help you. You may need funding. So six months down the line, you're still looking for support and help to actually start your business. What we've done here was to create a one-stop shop concept that under one roof you find all those services in a particular center. So if an entrepreneur comes here to start or grow his business, he would have all the required support to uh, get him on his feet and to start his business uh, within a very short space of time. So once you come to a center like this, and once you leave, you actually have some direction after this. Immediate, so there's an immediate effect in this particular space. This center saw in the last three months more than 4,000 people showing the need of uh, support uh, in the country for this kind of services. Uh, so yes, we do understand that there's a high unemployment rate, but it's good to see that people are actually wanting to do something uh, to change their lives and, and coming here for support and coming here to see how they can actually start their business and, and, and so forth. So that's quite encouraging. Government on its own um, cannot be able to ensure that it responds to the plight of our people. If you look at the National Development Plan, it's a, it's a plan of the country. If you look at the Houting 2055 vision uh, embedded in the Premier's uh, uh, transformation, modernization and, and reindustrialization, and you look at our own growth and development strategy, it's a, it's a collective a, 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 a developmental paradigm that requires the civil society, that requires government, that requires private sector to ensure that we deliver to, to building the non-racial, non-sexist and democratic prosperous South Africa. Among the private sector businesses working with The Business Place to advise budding entrepreneurs are Anglo Zemele and Growth Point. One of our partners, which is Anglo Zimele, which is a, a CSI initiative from Anglo Mind, uh, is basically housed here and uh, they do most of our funding applications. So, for example, if a client needs from zero to two million rand to start, grow their business, uh, they easily can go there. We refer them there and um, funding is accessible there. What the growth point uh, uh, model is basically they actually take the CSI budget and in partnership with the business place we run a thing called uh, together with uh, growth point run a, a program called property point incubation where uh, companies are recruited and they're selected in a in a program which is a focused construction uh, training program and over an 18 month period they go through all the necessary training and interventions and then they get plugged into the supply chain of growth point so some of these businesses now are, are, are sort of turning over a few million rand. In fact, one of the one that we've assisted, or the growth point model have assisted, uh, I believe is turning around in excess of 20 million rand. Then there is the city of Joburg ICT hub in partnership with Wits University. So the youth are a very important component of how the city sees itself develop. And um, so what the city does, particularly in terms of economic development, is we work together with our universities, so Fitz University is very important, the uh, University of Johannesburg is also key, uh, to put together programs that talk to key sectors. So on the ICT, um, there we work together very closely, in particular with the University of the Witwatersrand. We have set up an ICT hub with them. And what the hub does, it offers a space for mentorship and support for budding young ICT entrepreneurs. And in a similar way, we have one on the green economy, which is another strategic sector for Johannesburg, and that's with the University of Johannesburg. And it's a place where you can bring your ideas, we have special programs for that, and then the city then works with the best ideas, the best young people in the city, uh, just to take those ideas forward. One of the most exciting projects for the young population of Johannesburg is the world of technology opening up. One thing Johannesburg has in its favor as well is that it's put in place fairly good infrastructure. So if you look at ICT, the city is running the largest uh, fiber optic network in the country. A thousand kilometers of fiber optics around the city, which is, belongs to the city. And what we are doing now is we're switching on the network. So it means certain areas which really haven't had a lot of internet connectivity, now will have really good broadband. And it's going to go first uh, f to those communities, those areas where we know there hasn't been a lot of internet connectivity. People really can't afford, which has meant that they can't get involved in the economy, they can't socially interact in the way that they could. 
So the city is switching on its broadband network. And that's going to be a very important boost to productivity in the city. So mainly Wi-Fi based. Wi-Fi. So, so what will have what will happen is there'll be these little spurs. They'll sort of dig out from the main lines to local areas, and they'll put these Wi-Fi hotspots, and you can access them for free, 300 megabytes per day, wherever you are on your device. The opportunities that an open and free Wi-Fi broadband network can offer budding entrepreneurs aside, the program also offers training and job opportunities to many young people. A big part of the program is now training young people to be involved with this network. So we're working together with the private sector. We are training uh, a few thousand young people who are going to be involved in the maintenance of the fiber optic network. So they're being trained with the private sector about maintaining fiber optics, which is a very valuable skill because you can then take that out to the private sector. They are being trained also, a group of them, uh, in the networking, how to connect different buildings together because now you've got this access. And the third will be things like uh, web development, the actual content materials and the, the, the programming that goes with those. So the first 250 young people are running through the program uh, and they go through uh, four months of technical in-school training and six months of in-field experience uh, linked to the city. And after that, you know, they really are technicians for the new global economy. And uh, some of them might work with the city, some might work in the private sector. And every year we're going to run through lots more young people who are essentially going to build our capacity to maintain this uh, very state-of-the-art network. What we have done now, we have targeted 3,000 young people. These 3,000 young people, the focus is nothing else but on the digital space. Uh, we have advertised now, we have, uh, as, we, as we speak now, we have 250 young people that uh, are current, currently on training uh, on digital. We have a partnership with Cisco, we have partnership with Microsoft. Uh, these are our partners. They're actually training these young people now at, uh, at Saipono. Uh, once they're completed, these young people, they're packaged into entrepreneurs. And there's lots of opportunities for them uh, with these young, young people. For as long as they're with us, there's a, a, a substantive uh, 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 stipend that they get. Uh, and, and, and from there, we're looking into adding every year. There's, we have ad advertised for another 250 uh, of these young people that we're going to uh, get into the, the system. And part of the work that they'll be doing, they'll be going to communities, teaching people what they have actually been taught. Going out to communities, teaching them all sorts of just basic skills. So we, we're taking these young people into those areas to teach ordinary citizens around uh, digital knowledge, uh, ICT, uh, uh, but also empowering communities. But more, uh, the work that we're doing around issues around education is taking these young people on a number of opportunities. We do uh, SMME training, lots of training that we do. I mean, uh, uh, we have 6,000, uh, 6,500 just in one year around taking young people into intensive training from there exposing them to lots of other opportunities. Uh, but more we have uh, a focus around taking 1,000 young people and helping them on funding to make their businesses to be successful. And we do this, of course, with a number of partners uh, uh, from other agencies. But that's the, the type of work that uh, we do in as far as helping young people on enhancing their education, their qualification, but linking them to job opportunities. Thank you for watching. There will be repeats of this program over the weekend and we'll be back with a brand new episode on Wednesday the 29th of July at 1 o'clock Central African time. The topic will be the Ecomobility World Festival 2015 and what impact that will have on Santon.